Broken Fugue Solfege Day 31 Tropical Island Adrian slowly became aware of the voices around him as his consciousness drifted to the surface. He must have fallen asleep reading in his mother's bed last night. He buried deeper into the comforter. The voices stilled for a moment, only resuming when Adrian didn't show any further signs of wakefulness. I'm only doing this to make him happy, but I don't see any hope, Natalie. That was his mother. The bed shook as she moved with Natalie's help. She was breathing heavily as if she had climbed a steep flight of steps. There is only a 5% chance of a full recovery. Neither the treatments nor the therapy is working. Even if you don't recover fully, Natalie reassured her, he'll still love you. Emily laughed derisively. Gabriel is only satisfied with the best. He loves who I was. Emily, isn't that a harsh judgment? Is it? Her tone was weary. I've seen the way he looks at me. Adrian tried not to tremble as he cried. As Adrian stood from the piano bench, Emily flashed him her brightest smile, compensating for the applause she couldn't give. Well done, my love. Your father would be proud. Are you proud? Of course, Adrian. I have an idea, Adrian gasped, as if he'd landed on the answer to a problem that had been tormenting him. Why don't we move to a tropical island with no concert halls? No one will care whether you can play and you can relax all day long. Hurry and grow up then, my little prince, so you can whisk me away. Emily's eyes laughed. During the funeral, when Adrian had a chance to look inside his mother's casket, he felt empty inside. You didn't wait for me to grow up. Did it hurt too much to wait? Thank you for listening to Chapter 31 of Broken Fugue. Solfege. We're almost at the end, so stay tuned for the last part. <laughs>